In Asia, Hong Kong is well known for its modern cityscape, but few people are aware that it sits on a volcano. The volcano in question is no ordinary volcano as it produced one of the planet's largest explosive eruptions. In fact, Hong Kong is built on top of volcanic deposits which measure hundreds of meters thick that originated from the high island caldera supervolcano. These deposits largely originated from a single eruption which formed an 18 kilometer or 11 mile wide depression in the ground referred to as a caldera. Although this volcano has long been extinct, remnants of the area's explosive past can be found through a series of tens of thousands of hexagon shaped columns which represent thick beds of rhyolite ash. The High Island Supervolcano is located in far southeastern China where its complex encompasses much of the special administrative region of Hong Kong. Its outline is shown on screen and does not represent the original caldera rim. Instead, this region represents where its thick volcanic products are located within which the ancient caldera lies. Due to extreme tilting over millions of years, what used to be the top of the caldera is located on the eastern edge of the complex and the bottom of the caldera is located on the western edge. The High Island Supervolcano formed during an era which began 148 million years ago when the region experienced numerous catastrophic eruptions that formed similarly large albeit smaller calderas on the ground which may have been as much as a kilometer deep. These calderas formed via rhyolite plenty in eruptions that ejected dozens to hundreds of cubic kilometers of material forming four large adjacent calderas. The reason why such highly explosive volcanism occurred relates to the area's ancient geologic setting. At the time, a tectonic plate collision was ongoing several hundred kilometers east of the mainland. One plate was being subducted underneath another, from which melted material migrate upwards forming a chain of volcanoes. However, the intruding magma slowly began thinning the overlying crust over millions of years, causing it to eventually begin spreading apart and forming a back arc basin. Material in the mantle then rushed upwards to fill the empty space left by the thinning crust, resulting in successive supermassive eruptions. Over tens of thousands of years, beginning 141 million years ago, a massive body of magma intruded into the crust. During this time span, it generated a few eruptions on the surface forming lava domes, but the majority of magma stayed at depth. This magma chamber eventually reached a volume of several hundred cubic kilometers after which something triggered a large volume of material to rush towards the surface. As the magma erupted from a lengthy fissure, powerful explosions occurred due to the region's abundant groundwater. As viscous rhyolite lava flows poured out of these vents, the eruption became more energetic, releasing a sustained column of material at a rate of several million cubic meters of rock per second. As a plume of ash shot 50 kilometers or 164,000 feet into the atmosphere, part of the eruption column collapsed, producing highly energetic gas currents referred to as pyroclastic flows. These flows were up to a kilometer in height and seemingly defied local topography by traveling over mountains and reaching more than 100 kilometers distant. After a several day long intensive eruption, the underlying magma chamber had been drained to a point that the rock overlying it collapsed downwards by 1,850 meters, forming an 18 kilometer wide caldera. In total, 1,300 cubic kilometers of rock was ejected in an eruption 30% larger than the most recent super eruption of Yellowstone. Some areas were buried in more than 400 meters thick of ash in the course of less than a week. This ash was thickest within the caldera and took many years to cool. As it cooled, the material contracted towards a series of evenly spaced centers. Due to the overall structure of the material, this occurred from six different sides creating hexagon-shaped fractures. These hexagon fractures then propagated downwards as the rest of the material cooled, forming beautiful rhyolite ash hexagonal columns. More than 20,000 of these can be found around Hong Kong, which measure up to 30 meters tall. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new patron James P. Hanlon for supporting this channel.